AST Space Mobile will be the world's first space-based cellular broadband network. What that means is existing smartphones will connect directly to Space Mobile's satellites. No extra anything required to get fast mobile broadband internet from nearly anywhere on Earth. This has never been achieved before. How does this work? How is this even possible? Space Mobile may seem like magic, but it's the result of hundreds of engineers thinking differently and forging partnerships with the most advanced wireless companies out there, including Vodafone, American Tower, and Rakuten. And together, these partners provide access to billions of subscribers around the planet. To understand that magic, though, we have to go a little deeper. Let's start with satellites and how they get to space. Thousands of these human-made objects orbit the Earth. Most are a couple hundred miles high, orbit the planet at about 17,000 miles per hour. That's 27 times as fast as a commercial jet, 10 times as fast as a bullet. You need a rocket, a big and efficient one, to get up there. The rocket's job? Propel a payload out of Earth's atmosphere and into the vacuum of space. This is the equation for orbital velocity. It defines the speed, v, an object must go at a given distance from a planet's center, r, in order to orbit it and stay in orbit. The mass of the orbiting object doesn't affect that speed, v. All that matters is the mass of Earth, m, and the distance of the object from its center, r. This magic means you can get something heavier than a car or as big as the International Space Station to circle the Earth for years and years. You can then use that satellite for a number of applications, including communications, Earth observation, GPS, radio, television, and so many other technologies we can't live without today. Scientists knew about orbital physics for hundreds of years, but it wasn't until 1945 that someone publicly said, hey, can we use this to communicate over large parts of the Earth? This was more than a decade before Sputnik, the first artificial satellite, launched into orbit. That person was Arthur C. Clarke, the science fiction author who later and famously wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey. Clarke described a human-made satellite that stay fixed in the sky above Earth's equator. From there, it relay communication all over the planet. Today we call this orbit geostationary orbit, or GEO. Clark's dream came true about 20 years later. Now, GEO is great for broadcasting live TV, and engineers later evolved it to beam internet data. This concept completely revolutionized life for people in countries with access to these technologies. But there are a few catches. Geosatellites orbit about 22,236 miles away. Their signals weaken over that great distance, requiring special antennas on Earth to receive them. Also, it takes light, including wireless signals, about 120 milliseconds to travel from a geosatellite to Earth. A full round trip for data, though, is more like half a second. And that's not including the time it takes data to travel across the web on Earth. Today, more and more satellites are flying to low Earth orbit, or LEO, instead of GEO. There are good reasons for that. LEO is a zone around our planet that extends about 1,200 miles into space. Space Mobile satellites will orbit in that zone, from roughly 430 miles above the Earth. That's more than 50 times as close as a GEO satellite. This allows for high-speed, near-real-time communication. The signals from LEO arrive stronger and take a fraction of the time to make the trip. Space Mobile satellites will circle the planet once every 90 minutes. This means they'll constantly rise and set. So Space Mobile will launch many satellites. As one vanishes over the horizon, another will be there to take over. Their large size and relatively close distance is what allows these satellites to communicate directly with smartphones on the ground. This is possible today because electronics have gotten so much smaller, faster, efficient, and more powerful. 
rocket launches are also getting less and less expensive thanks to new innovations and increased competition from companies around the globe. Some companies are using Leo to deliver broadband internet to rural homes and businesses. It's a great mission, equivalent to providing Wi-Fi to these locations, but it requires special equipment to talk to the satellites. Space Mobile, on the other hand, will provide broadband internet directly to smartphones. This isn't as crazy as it sounds. Phones that can talk to satellites have existed for 25 years. However, their antennas are twice as big as a smartphone. Their batteries are several times as large, and they don't work with existing cellular systems. With Space Mobile, you just need a smartphone. That's it. This is possible because Space Mobile is making some of the most innovative satellites ever created. Everything about Space Mobile is designed to mimic terrestrial cellular network hardware. Basically, they're incredibly advanced cell towers in space. For this to work, Space Mobile's production satellites, called Bluebirds, have to be big. Each Bluebird production satellite will weigh about as much as a truck. And in space, it will be larger than a basketball court while keeping a thin, low profile, like a dinner plate. But they won't fly to space like that. Space Mobile has designed their satellites to fold up to the size no bigger than a small car. They'll ride to orbit in that stowed configuration. Once the rocket deploys a bluebird, it will automatically unfurl like a flower. One satellite can cover nearly 2.4 million square miles. Now, to put this in perspective, that's the combined area of the 15 largest U.S. states, Kansas, Idaho, Utah, Minnesota, Michigan, Wyoming, Oregon, Colorado, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Montana, California, Texas, and Alaska. It's also enough to cover three Mexicos, nearly two Indias, about six Egypts, and more than half of Europe. This means Space Mobile won't need thousands of satellites to close cellular coverage gaps that affect billions of people. With less than 200 bluebirds, practically all of Earth will get high-speed cellular broadband from space. Bluebirds will be big enough to see a smartphone's signals on the ground and powerful enough to light up that phone with 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G wireless frequencies. They'll do this through a modern marvel called a phased array antenna. Phased arrays are essentially compact clusters of many, many tiny antennas. They work together to electronically and almost instantly form and steer thousands of communications beams from the satellite to the ground. Each bluebird will carry many phased array panels, allowing the satellite to connect millions of mobile devices. Each Bluebird will link those devices to the web through gateways connected to vital telecom and internet infrastructure on the ground. So what seems like magic is in fact just different, different than anything that's ever been developed before. Part of the reason this is possible now is the company has figured out how to make their satellites modular. Many of the components, like building blocks, are exactly the same. They're called microns. Microns will be high-tech satellite parts that Space Mobile mass produces at low cost in Midland, Texas. They'll be made using the same manufacturing techniques as consumer electronics, but with special adaptations for space. The point is, the technology is revolutionary. It's a whole new communications infrastructure, a space-based cellular broadband network. And this network will help more than 5 billion cell phones in use today stay connected no matter where they are on Earth. It will also help close a colossal digital divide, getting more than half a billion people online who have no mobile internet access whatsoever. This is game-changing. This is revolutionary. This is Space Mobile.